first snap. McMillan, no game. Ryan Clements, the leading passer in the Big East, ninth in the nation. He set out last week's win against Boston College because of an ankle sprain. He says he's 100% now. That block by Miami was the 20th blocked punt or field goal in Butch Davis's 22 games as the head coach of the I, Hurricanes. I know, and, and I'll tell you, that's a remarkable stat. That is an example of outstanding coaching. That's not just talent, that's coaching. Second and 10, and Clement looking to go long. A little mix-up on the signal there. Tony Gator cut back in. And Clement wants to make sure they got their signals straight. McMillan will start. James will see action. Gator and Green, the receivers. Nick Williams is a fullback. Chris Jones tied in. Offensive line intact and healthy with Blaze, Mercier, all league center, Casey Jones, Wainer, and Ina. Third down and 10. Jim, after that last play, Ryan Clement ran 20 yards down the field, grabbed Tony Gator, and got him squared away. I'll tell you, that guy is the fiercest competitor I've seen all season long. McMillan, first down Miami. Crossed him up with the run. They gain 11. Well, Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator at Miami, does not want to fall behind the down and distance. He was in third down, long yardage. He crosses him up with a little draw play. It's a good way to play, particularly when you're on the road into a noisy crowd like this. You give your team a real chance to do something positive. McMillan hobbles to the sideline. He's had a nagging left ankle sprain. So he goes out, and they bring in Trent Jones instead of Edron James. Number six, first and ten. Jones puts the helmet on and gets the carry right away for maybe a yard or no gain. Syracuse's defense has allowed only five touchdowns in six league games. Myers up front with Freeney, Anderson, and Walters. They rotate four linebackers with Mike Brown getting into the mix with Cottrell, Pons, and Helmsley. Abrams, all league corner. Darius also, Walker and Gadsden. Syracuse is very experienced at the linebacker positions as well as the secondary. This is a veteran team. Second down and 10. Jason Coles has come in as a free safety replacing Donovan Darius. Jones out to the 36. Hemsley on the hit. It will be third and five for the Canes. Well, once again, Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator at Miami, he's in second and long yardage. What does he do? He runs the ball, gets his team in a better percentage chance to make this third down conversion by being in about third and five as opposed to third and long. Jones, great effort to pick up the first down. He had two tacklers about to pounce on him back at the 36, including Antoine Pons, and he broke away to pick up the first down on an eight-yard pickup. Sometimes you just want to lay the ball off to your best athlete, in this case, the tailback, Trent Jones. He just does it by himself. Good backs make defenders miss constantly. That's what he did in that case. He made Syracuse miss. Hemsley flattened the quarterback after he released the football, but Clement is back up under center on first and ten. Clement to Gator, and that's near another first down in Syracuse territory. Working on Kevin Abrams. Tony Gator is the fastest of all the Miami receivers. The defensive backs from Syracuse are going to give him some room, some space, because he can go deep. He just ran down the field, turned inside, caught the ball, made a positive first down. You're going to have to back off Tony Gator as Syracuse is. Otherwise, he'll blow right by you. Gator, a tailback his whole career until his senior season. 
And he has really started to shine. First down from the Orange 46. Clement, man open. It's green at the 17. And down at the 9 with flags. Yatil Green. 38 yards. The key to any successful pass is time for the quarterback. The Miami offensive line gave Ryan Clement all day long to find Yatil Green down deep into the secondary of Syracuse. He has nothing but time to hunt out a receiver. That's what you love when you're Butch Davis trying to win this game. A face mask penalty on the end of the play will put Miami inside of the five. You know, Jim, noise is a huge problem here in the carrier game. After the catch, face mask, five-yard penalty against the defense, half the distance of the goal penalty, first and goal. But Miami is doing an excellent job of communicating. They practiced all week long whispering their plays, passing the calls down the line of scrimmage, and for the quarterback turning around to give it to the calls to the running back. But noise is a huge factor. First and goal. Jones moving the pile to the one. There is a flag down. Against Miami. Michelle? Well, Jim, Dyrell McMillan has, is in a great deal of pain. He has now twisted the other ankle, the right ankle, not the one that was previously twisted. They have untaped him. They're looking to wrap him up, monitor his condition, and see if he can come back in, Jim. Well, Edger and James sprained an ankle also last week in his 100-yard effort, but he told me yesterday at the walk-around that he was 100%. Well, whenever you're in a championship game, you never know who the hero is going to be. First string players go out all the time and somebody steps up. That's just the way a championship game has to be played. Trent Jones has stepped up. He remains the tailback. First and goal from the nine. Clement. Morgan given chase. And throws it away. Delane Morgan twice now has been right in the face of the quarterback, but unable to drop him for a sack. Now that was a good play by Ryan Clement, the quarterback, avoiding the sack. You want your quarterback in this area of the field. If he doesn't have an open receiver, unload the ball. Don't take the sack. Don't cost yourself field position for the field goal or the touchdown. That's what Ryan Clement did. Second and goal. Touchdown, Miami. Magic bit. Miami takes the ball 80 yards with its first possession. Whenever you're playing against a fired-up team like Syracuse is today, Miami wants to run counter-offense. This was a little bootleg pass. A naked bootleg pass. He came out all alone, the quarterback, found Magic Benton in the end zone. The contain man for Syracuse broke down. That allowed Ryan Clement to get the corner and have the time to complete the ball. Andy Crossland, freshman, place kicker, makes the extra point. It's Turner on the run back. Hit by Brooks at the 14. The reason that last touchdown was successful was because Syracuse didn't have any containment. Jason Walters, number 90, he loses containment on Ryan Clement. Ryan Clement has time to come out to the corner, and Magic Benton works against Kevin Abrams, beats him man on man. You've got to be able to contain the quarterback to have a successful defense. Jim Turner, the kick returner and starting receiver hobbled off the field a little gimpy 
So they have a two tight end formation with Roland Williams joining Cincino. Thomas. For about four. Nate Brooks had the tackle on the kick return. He's the one who scored the touchdown off the block field goal against West Virginia when Jack Holman handed off to him. Jim, the key for Syracuse is not to lose its confidence now. You mentioned that Miami has dominated this series the last five years. Syracuse comes out, has an opening drive, gets a kick block. Miami goes right down and scores. You can't lose your confidence, and I don't think Syracuse will. I think they're here for the whole afternoon to play a championship game. Second and four, Conrad for a two tough yard. Hit by Marcus Wimberly. And Next Saturday, a classic, Army and Navy. From Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, that's 12 noon Eastern time. What a terrific year it's been for the military schools. Army and Navy, right here on CBS. James Burgess, the middle linebacker for Miami, down on the field. We'll take a timeout. They've come into the game with a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and tempo. Both are playing at high speed. Third and one. Wishbone set for Syracuse. <laughs> McNabb keeps for the first down. in bowl games with wins in the Fiesta Hall of Fame and Gator Bowls. But he told me this week, Jim, that this was bigger than any bowl game he was going to play in. He wanted to beat Miami. Option, Thomas, chased down by Coley and Tremaine Mack for no gain. One of, one of the interesting matchups today is the option against the speed of the Miami defense. When you play Miami, you're playing against speed. Option football can be negated by great foot speed by your defenders. Right now, Miami has the option of Syracuse under control. James Burgess with a groin pull, but is expected to return to the Miami lineup. So far, Syracuse with 11 rushes in 13 plays. Malcolm Thomas out. Conrad, the single back, flanking the quarterback on second and ten. Pressure, McNabb is sacked by Kenny Holmes. Chad Pagese also in on the sack. Kenny Holmes is the defensive end that a lot of people feel has been the dominant player at Miami this season. This is his 11th sack of the year. He's known as the sack man, Kenny Holmes. Kenny Holmes, a senior who scored a touchdown back in 93 when he was a freshman. Had an interception, ran it back 11 yards for a touchdown against Syracuse. Well, you know, you've got Kenny Holmes on one side, Kennard Lang, 96 on the other side. They feel they're the two best defensive ends in the country. Those guys at Florida State, they've got something to say about that, too. Third and 16, there's Kenny Holmes again. Maybe a one or two yard gain, but Syracuse will have to punt. What happens is that when you're in third and 16, you're really executing a pass rush. Kenny Holmes right there executed a pass rush, but he came off the rush when he saw the draw play and responded. This is what makes him a great defensive lineman. He can put pressure on the quarterback and react to the draw. He also got some help by number 54, James Burgess, who stepped back into the lineup after missing a couple of plays. Sean Reale's first punt. Jermaine Mack almost got to him. Starts on the run back. Starts across the 40. Look out. Oh, he lost his footing at the 46-yard line of Syracuse. 53-yard punt, 28-yard return. Jermaine Mack, they need to keep track of him all day long. He's a great punt blocker, PAT field goal blocker. Paul Pascaloni said we need to know where he is on every single punt that we execute. He has blocked nine punts or field goals in his career. Miami trying to grab a piece of the conference championship. Edger and James now in the lineup. Watch him, the tailback, number 32. 
to James. Stutter step, no gain. Nowhere to run. Antonio Anderson, first to hit him. And you can almost hear him celebrating a little bit down in Blacksburg, Virginia. With every first down, with every score, those guys down there at Virginia Tech, they're going wild. You know who they're rooting for today. It's strange, but they're rooting for Miami. A Miami win would send Virginia Tech in all likelihood to the Orange Bowl. Uh, Frank Beamer and his coaches and players have had another marvelous year. They are the most underrated team in America. Miami will try its own flea flicker. Clement to Magic Bitten, and it's broken up. Kevin Abrams knocked it away. Magic Benton, he runs straight down the field. He goes inside on a little post route. He's open, but Kevin Abrams, the offside corner, comes over and makes a fabulous play. He, mi he misses the interception, but he at least saves the touchdown. Right here, Kevin Abrams has the interception. He just can't get it tucked away. It goes through his hand. Third and ten for Miami. Three receivers in the game. Blitz, Clement to Green through his fingertips. And then almost intercepted by David Bird. Yatiel Green, we've seen him make that kind of catch all season long, but not this time. Well, the ball was a little bit off target. Clement got a little bit of pressure. He had to unload it sooner than he wanted to. Last week, Andy Crossland did not even have to punt. It was the first Miami game in five years. But they didn't punt. Quinton Spotwood to return. End over end. From the 15, Spotwood. Hit by Roderick Mack at the 20. Next week, the season premiere of college basketball on CBS. Most of you will see Kansas at Pauley Pavilion against UCLA. And the Jayhawks, who play San Diego tomorrow, in all likelihood, the number one ranked team in the country, going out there to play the Bruins. That's next Saturday. Some of you will see Clemson against Virginia. next Saturday here on CBS the season premiere college basketball season already all kinds of excitement this year the road to Indianapolis and the final four in late March Kyle McIntosh in the backfield on first down play action Grave uh, the chase and the incomplete pass what a heavy rush Put on the quarterback by Kennard Lang. Kennard Lang really showed his quickness on that particular play. He totally got rid of the Syracuse blocker, accelerated to the quarterback, put tremendous heat on McNabb. McNabb was lucky to get this ball off. Very fortunate he didn't take a sack. But he should have had a completion because he actually hit him right in the hands. Sinsano should have had this one. Daryl Daniel in as a receiver on second and ten. Rolling out and intercepted. Earl Little for Miami. Laying out for that one. Donovan McNabb was coming out on a bootleg pass, and Earl Little just read the route beautifully, made a great break on the ball. This is just outstanding secondary play. He read the keys that he was coached to all week long. The ball is a little late being delivered, but the acceleration of Earl Little was the key on this play. Only the seventh interception thrown by McNabb all year long. Miami had picked off only one pass in the last 165 attempts before that one. Now taking over at the 29. It's Edger and James. For a gain of about three, there is with the tackle. Earl Little, he, that's his second interception this season. Had one prior. 
What a big play. He's a senior from North Miami. Second down and seven for the Canes, who lead 7-0. Edgerin James, first down at the 18. Boy, if you want to see a, a tailback do it on his own, this is an example that we talk about in coaching of making yards when there aren't any. Edgerin James just works the blocking scheme and turns on the speed with his power and vision, falls forward for a positive gain. That was a no gain by the Syracuse defense. That was just great execution by Edgerin James. Saw Earl Little pointing, pointing toward the sky. He dedicated that interception to Marlon Barnes. Fallen teammate is killed during the offseason. Edger and James fumbles the football, picked up by Syracuse. It's Rod Gadsden. Clement has a shot at him. Ryan Clement. He is so competitive. There's no way that he's going to give up a touchdown. He chases him down and keeps him from scoring. Gadsden runs it 59 yards before Clement put the clamps on him at the 25. Thomas for three. Freshman, true freshman, after a good carry, on his way to about another eight-yard gain, coughs up the football. Well, when you're Edger and James, you're in your first huge game of your career. He didn't play a whole lot against Florida State, came out of his redshirt year because of the injuries at Miami. This is really the biggest game he's ever played in. You got to get used to the kind of intensity and the atmosphere here. He'll change ends. The end of the first quarter with the score. Miami 7, Syracuse killing 7-0. Seven second and 7 from the Miami 22. Option pitch, Thomas. Back, man the corner. It'll be third and five for the Orangemen. Tony Colby also in on the hit. I said it earlier, Jim. I'm really impressed with the way Miami can run to the ball on the option. They've got those linebackers. They can all fly. Those defensive linemen are quick. That front group can play the option. Syracuse is going to keep running it as well they should because it stresses the defense. But it won't be until later in the game that they really probably get a lot of benefit out of it. Jim Turner has returned. He's on the near side, third and five. Rolling out to Turner's direction. Picked off, no. Should have been. Dwayne Starks. It was thrown right at him. McNabb overthrew Deion Maddox. Donovan McNabb, he threw this into coverage. This clearly should not have been thrown. He could not find anyone open. He panicked a little bit. He just threw that ball away. He, he just couldn't find... Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Starks almost intercepted. He couldn't find Deion Maddox. Maddox was open underneath, but he didn't see him. Miami blocked Nathan Trout's first attempt from 34 yards. This one a 37-yard attempt. There's Tremaine Mack. Nine times he's blocked kicks in his career. This time the kick is good. Just inside the right crossbar. Right upright. 36 yards per return. He won't give this one a try. Not really. I really don't, Bob. Just, uh, you know, turnover. 
could be Florida in the Orange Bowl against Syracuse or Virginia Tech out of the Gators lost today. Miami will take over at the 20. When, when you're playing in a championship game, you have to get big plays out of your big players. Magic Benton had that ball in the fingertips of his hands. He needs to hang on to that thing. It's a great pass by Ryan Clement. He needs to lay out for that ball. Should have caught that one. He needs to stretch out, lay out, sacrifice his body, but get that ball caught for your team in the championship game. Second and ten. Good piece of running near the first. They're going to mark him a few inches shy of the 30-yard line, which will set up third and short. Well, and you've got to admire Butch Davis and Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator of uh, Miami. They come right back to Edron James following the turnover. They don't sit him down on the bench. They make sure that he knows they still have confidence in him despite the fact that he fumbles the ball. It's hard to do that when you're playing a freshman back. It's not easy as a coach. Third and one. They go back to James. Got the first. All he had to do was reach the 30. He advances it to the 32. 26 yards rushing for James. Six attempts. Miami leading seven to three. Early stages of the second quarter. Miami trying to grab a piece of the conference championship it's the sixth year the Big East has been a football conference Miami has either won it outright or had a share of the league title four of the first five years they've been the big dog in the East there's no question about it that pass thrown in the area of Carlo Joseph the only year Miami was not on top of the Big East standings at the end or shared the title as they did last year with Virginia Tech it was back in 93 when West Virginia won the Big East. Well, in talking with Paul Pascaloni this week, it's such an important game for him and his staff and players. You know, people talk, they, they talk to you about how you've done against your opposition. He's 0-4 against Miami. That's why it's such a huge game for him. He needs to prove he can beat Miami. Second and 10, James for two yards. It took about four players to get a piece of them. Antoine Pons finally put an end to that rush. Well, Miami has come into the game wanting to establish the running game. They want to take pressure off of their throwing game. They're going to keep pounding the ball. This is the way that Butch Davis and Larry Coker want to play. They want to keep making it physical, try to dominate the line of scrimmage, and run that clock. Third and seven. particular play he was the one that put the pressure on Ryan Clement the on Maddox there's a flag That's, he was interfered with Maddox never had a chance as Nathaniel Brooks collided with the returner well the question becomes did Nate Brooks collide with him or did a Syracuse man collide with him first
good question. Was Brooks pushed into the returner? The kicker was blocked into the receiver. Therefore, there is no flag in the play. Yeah. If that's the case, why doesn't Miami get the football? Well, I think that's what Butch Davis is arguing right now. If if that's the case, which right here the officials have ruled that Nate was was blocked into the receiver, then that is a live ball. Should be Miami's ball. It should be Miami's football. He had the knee down on the recovery right there. So as they try to sort it out, Butch Davis pleading his case will return after this word from your local station. They finally have reached a decision, and it's going to be Miami football. The kicker was blocked into the receiver. The receiver touched the football, and the kicking team wound up with possession after being touched by the receiver, first and ten. You know, it's the proper call. If that's if they're going to rule that Brooks was pushed into the returner, then it was a free football touched by Syracuse and then recovered by Brooks of if, Miami. If that's their ruling, there's no doubt about it. That ball hit the re Syracuse return man. It was on the turf. Nate Brooks was smart enough to jump on that ball and recover it. It is Miami's ball if that's their interpretation. So Miami takes over at the Orangeman 27. This crowd is furious. Trent Jones for about four. Right here you can see Nate Brooks. The officials ruled that he was blocked into the return man. That's what the officials ruled. Once the ball came loose, it was a fumble. Brooks got on it. Miami's ball. That's the how the rule's being interpreted right here. And Butch Davis and his coaches argued and argued convincingly. The one thing about it, the crew went by themselves, all five, five of the seven officials, they discussed it, they worked it out, at least it was done in a calm manner. And it was the right call. Clement to Yachtiel Green, tough catch at the 19. It'll be third and about two. Yatil Green, he's the money man for Miami. That's the receiver they want to get the ball to often today. He can go up, and he's a physical receiver. He can work against DBs as well as linebackers. Third and two. Two tight ends. Trent Jones cuts back for the first at the 15. The Syracuse linebackers overran this play. They flowed so fast towards Trent Jones. He cuts back underneath that flow and made the first down. That's good vision by that running back. That's why that play worked. And that man right there, Ricky Perry, with the big block. Miami with eight first downs. You set it down from the 15. Jones. Clement come in to the defense of his teammate. Ryan Clement, he'd like to play linebacker. That guy, he'd be more comfortable playing linebacker. I've watched him three games this year. I am so impressed with his competitiveness. Once in a while, he gets a little bit out of control, but you love that in your quarterback, and you know who really likes it? Those offensive linemen. They want a tough guy playing quarterback. He has the mentality and, of an offensive line. And I'll tell you, they love it. They've got three backup linemen in right now for the Hurricanes. Jay Johnson, Ricky Perry, Shabaka Abdul-Majid. Second down and eight. Clement. That was thrown in the area of Yatil Green, a little behind him. Anthony Walker on the coverage. Third and eight coming up for Miami. Well, Yatil Green is working man-to-man -man against Kevin Abrams, the best defensive back at Syracuse. It's man coverage. The ball is 
off the mark a little bit. Ryan Clement needed to lead Yatil Green on that particular play. Across, no contact, and it, it pulled Jay Johnson out of his stance. So what will they call? Dead ball foul. Ball stop. On the offense, it will remain third down. Jay Johnson in for Curl and Blaze. Mike Brown, a converted linebacker who's playing defensive end in their sixth defensive back package. He's the one that came across the line of scrimmage, but he drew Miami off. Miami is the one that reacted. Good play by Mike Brown, even though he did, can't jump the snap count like that. Third and 13. Clement, right side, Yatiel Green, caught. Touchdown, Miami. A late signal, but Green in the back corner of the end zone scores Miami's second touchdown. Yatiel Green is working against uh, David Bird, number 22, man-to-man. -man. Yatiel Green is the most physical receiver at Miami. That ball was laid out perfectly by Ryan Clement. Only one person could catch that. That was Yatiel Green. Great throw. Crossland, extra point. Good. 9-13 to go, second quarter. 14-3, Hurricanes. Norm Gerber, the defensive coordinator at Syracuse, was worried about how they matched up man-to-man -man against Miami's wideouts. Jim, the training staff has told me that Yatil Green has dislocated his left index finger. They're taping up the finger next to it as well, but it's that index finger that's really hurting, Jim. Jim Turner. Nice run back. And a late flag, a face mask call it's going to be against Miami. If Order you're make. Miami, anytime you can isolate Yatil Green on anybody in the secondary of Syracuse, you have an advantage. He just runs right by number 22, David Bird, and the ball is thrown right perfectly to the corner of the end zone. You can't throw it any better than that. That's the hardest throw to make in a game right there, the one that Ryan Clement just made. And on the kick return, the kicker, Jorge Gaetan, got a hold of the face mask. And a five-yard infraction, they rule it. So Syracuse starts from the 45. Ryan Clements' second touchdown pass of this game. Evan Johnson and his receiver. McNabb looking left to Johnson at the 50. Make that Daryl Daniel with the catch. Magic Benton with the first touchdown of the game from nine yards out, and then a field goal, Trout, from 37 yards. Green's grab makes it 14-3 Miami. Syracuse in the second quarter, well, pretty dominating in the last nine games. But Miami is the story at the moment. Wrestle down for a one-yard loss. That's James Burgess. Boy, did James Burgess, the middle linebacker for Miami, did he fill that hole. This is the way you want your middle linebacker to play. He's the second leading tackler on the Miami defense. He stepped right up inside when he saw the, the block back by the center and filled that hole. That was picture perfect. Senior who was shaken up earlier. With a groin pull, but has come back in, make a couple of nice stops for losses. Miami has yielded only 65 yards so far in this game. Third and six. McNabb fires behind his target. Threw it behind Cinsano. 
Donovan McNabb is not on target so far in this game. He's been erratic. He, he's, a, a, he's what I call a streak thrower. He's a guy that he'll miss seven or eight passes, and then all of a sudden he'll get hot and begin to hit those passes. I, I think what Syracuse will begin to do is start to throw the shorter routes to give him some confidence and build up his timing a little bit. That'll help him. He's only two of seven with one pass picked off. He comes off his worst game, worst game of his career last week against Temple, where he completed only four passes and rushed for minus three yards. Look at this bounce. Turner puts it back into play, and it's down by Roland Williams at the three-yard line. Sean Reale, a senior, with a terrific kick. Now they're going to rule it a touchback. Wrangler jeans. Available in the on both sides of the field in perfect position to try and make this make this call. Miami at the 20 instead of the three. Halfway through the second quarter, Hurricanes in front, 14 to three. Edger and James were about four. Next Saturday, Terry, I know how much you're looking forward to this. Army and Navy. Next Saturday, 12 o'clock Eastern time, right here on CBS. Well, I've watched this game, it seems like my entire adult life. It's going to be fabulous to be there in that environment and watch those two teams play. And, and the Army-Navy teams this year are better than they've been in recent memory. Both having great seasons, along with Air Force, as you mentioned. Air Force with the upset win this year over Notre Dame. Second down, six. Clement got it away to Joseph. Has the first down at the 30. And tackled at the 33. Hans had a potential 17-yard sack. Clement kept holding on to it until the very end. Dana Cottrell was also in on the quarterback. Antoine Pons, number 50, he leads the Syracuse defense in tackles for losses. He blitzes a lot. He puts the pressure on Ryan Clement, but you have to give Clement credit. He stayed in there until the very last second until he dropped it off to Carlo Joseph. That's the mark of a tough, hard-nosed quarterback. First down. James. Hit by Anthony Walker after a three-yard gain. Jim, in Miami's running game, they establish a pressure point. That pressure point is off tackle, both to the tight end side and to the split end side. They usually kick out with a fullback and pull an offside lineman to help block the linebacker. They want to put pressure on a particular point of the defense. That's what they've been doing thus far in the game. And it's been working. They've run the ball very effectively against Syracuse. Second and seven. All the starters back in on the offensive line for Miami. Clement over to Gator. First down, 46. Not nine yards to Tony Gator. Ryan Clement just comes off a play action fake. It's a well-timed throw. He releases the ball when Tony Gator makes his break. The ball's on time. Very difficult pass to defend. Clement with 105 yards passing, two for touchdowns, eight of 16 so far. First down, Miami. James, face mask perhaps, no call. James turned around and made a plea for a face mask call. Didn't get it. Again, the Big East standing. Syracuse can win the conference championship outright with a win today. But a Miami victory makes it a tri-championship with Virginia Tech. So uh, high in the coaches poll and with an impressive win over Virginia yesterday. That's the tiebreaker if there's a three-way tie. Which one gets the Alliance Bowl bid? It's the team with the best standings of the two polls combined. Well, I'd be shocked if it wasn't Virginia Tech. The coaches have great respect for what Frank Beamer's done. Second and 11, picking up the first down with ease to Yatil Green. 
to the Miami 37 or the, the Syracuse 37. Yeah, Teal Green is a player you've just got to keep track of if you're the Syracuse defense. He can hurt you down the field or underneath. Here he runs a little underneath stop route, turns to the outside. Ryan Clement gets in the ball, but it's the yards after the catch that are impressive. It's only a four or five yard pass, but then he makes yards after the reception. Playing with that hand wrapped with that dislocated finger, plus a nagging hamstring pull. Four catches already for Green. James spinning for about two to the 35. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. 14 to three, Miami. Well, and Miami continues to pound away with that big, experienced offensive line. Run that clock. They want to keep that Syracuse offense off the field. That's exactly what they're getting accomplished. Butch Davis, second year as the head coach in Miami. Won two Super Bowl rings as an assistant at Dallas. A championship ring for Miami back in the 80s when he was the defensive line coach. Pass, is it complete? Ruled incomplete. Magic Benton did not hold on to it. Well, they have three officials on this call. They had to get this one right for sure. Magic Benton runs down the field, turns around. Ryan Clement hits him right in the hands with the ball. He needs, again, to make that catch. Those are the kind of plays that you need guys to come up with in these kind of championship games. This hits him right in the numbers. Miami 5-7 on third down conversions. They scored a touchdown on third and 13 last time they had the football. Third and eight. Clement to Gator. Gator with a nifty move inside the 10. And Gator goes in for a touchdown. Tony Gator broke away from Donovan Darius. And Ryan Clement has his third touchdown pass of the game. Well, Tony Gator lined up in the slot, and he just ran a little slant route. The thing you have to remember, Tony Gator's a tailback. He's a converted tailback. Once he gets the ball, he's got the ability of a running back to put it in the end zone. That's exactly what he did. Crossland's extra point makes it 21 to 3, Miami. Gator's seventh touchdown of the season. Five of them have been over 30 yards, including this one, covering 35 yards on a third and eight situation. Tony Gator from 35 yards out as Miami completes an 80-yard drive. Senior from Miami, Florida. Kevin Johnson awaits the kick, as does Jim Turner. Turner fields it on one hop. Brought down at the 31. Tony Gator is in the slot. He's working against Rod Gatson, but watch Donovan Darius, the safety. Gator just runs down the field, takes it inside. Clement hits him with the ball, but the safety man is going to miss the tackle. He's the guy that's got to come in and stop that for a touchdown. He fell down. Donovan Darius is the best hitter in the secondary for Syracuse. He's got to make that play. <laughs> Syracuse moved the football on its first possession, but then had a field goal blocked. They have been silenced ever since. Kyle McIntosh with the carry. Only netting 17 yards now with that run on its last four possessions plus that one play. Next Saturday, the season premiere of college basketball here on CBS. Kansas on the UCLA campus. Jayhawks will be ranked number one, taking on the Bruins next week with all those banners flying overhead. 
So we'll see Clemson against Virginia. That's all next Saturday on CBS. McNabb, long ball for Turner, and a flag on Little. Kenny Holmes, number 90, the defensive end, he puts the heat on the quarterback. Donovan McNabb, he's the one that puts the heat on him, but Earl Little, number four, clearly interfered. In fact, he probably did the right thing. It was defensive holding. He probably did the right thing because it might have been a touchdown, had he not. Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, we saw the graphic earlier, just how dominant Syracuse has been during its win streak in the second quarter, but that is the first first down of this quarter for Syracuse today. The Miami defense has just played outstanding. This guy hasn't been too bad either. Oh boy, he's, he's been hot. Syracuse with three minutes to go in the first half. 67 total yards. Maybe one more is all McNabb keeps. Marvin Davis on the hit. Clement came into this game as the number one ranked passer in the Big East, just a fraction ahead of McNabb in the pass efficiency ratings. Well, thus far today, he has clearly outplayed McNabb. But Ryan Clement, don't you just know that he's thinking about Scott Covington's performance last yes. week after Covington had that 295-yard day and three touchdowns? And he's thinking, there's no way I'm not playing today. They'll bring me in that other guy. I guarantee he's thinking that. As feisty as he is. Oh. Second down. Second and nine. McNabb. Way downfield to Turner. No flag. Three Hurricanes in the area defending. Stark, Little, and Mack. Jim Turner was the target. McNabb threw that football 65 yards. Well, he, he, he put this one up for grabs. This is totally covered. Jim Turner is not open. This ball should not have been thrown. Donovan McNabb needs to learn to pull this ball down and run with it. He's got the legs. He needs to do it. He's only two of eight for 26 yards and one interception. He needs to pull that down. Third and nine. Ian McIntosh in as a receiver. See if McNabb can find a receiver on this passing play. Holmes makes a diving attempt. And then McNabb gets it to Williams for a first down. 12-yard gain. Penny Holmes almost got to McNabb. Donovan McNabb is most dangerous when he's running around the field, when he's scrambling. That's the thing that Bill Miller, the defensive coordinator of Miami, feared the most. He uses his legs as well as his arms. That's what beat you, his legs. 140 to go in the first half. They counter Thomas. Brought down by Twan Russell. And Tremaine Mack at the 32. Another first down. 12-yard carry. Malcolm Thomas is the leading rusher for Syracuse. He hasn't done a whole lot yet. This is just a little draw play to take advantage of that fierce Miami rush. The defensive linemen of Miami are shooting up the field to put the pressure on McNabb. He slips the ball underneath to Thomas for a positive game. That'll slow that defense down. Same play, Thomas. For another 10, maybe 11. What you tell your, your offensive team, Jim, is that, look, if they're rushing that hard, we've got to counter them with the draw and with screens. Syracuse has now gone to the draw play to try and slow that rush down. Two plays in a row. They're going to keep running it and, and until Miami quits coming up the field like that. One minute to go in the first half. From the Miami 21. You're right. They do it again. And Thomas breaks free again for another 11 yards. 
Now, I don't think they're going to come back with it a fourth time, but I wouldn't question them if they did. Miami plays a certain style of defense. It's a penetrating, up-the-field style. This will slow that defensive line down. The last three plays, this man has carried it 12 yards, 11 yards, and another 12 yards. And a timeout by Syracuse. They go to it for a fourth straight time. A little different play this time, but I don't know where Malcolm Thomas was the first quarter of the game, but the last four plays, he has lit up this Miami defense. And the offensive center, Harvey Pennypacker and Scott Kiernan, the left guard, they're the ones that made that play work. They blew Miami off the line of scrimmage. Thomas getting the last 44 yards on that drive, four attempts. We have a 21 to 10 ball game at the Carrier Dome. Game, big players make big plays in these kind of games, and that's what he's done. First, he hit Magic Benton from nine yards out. Then Yatil Green on a third and 13 pass play. Later on, they converted again on third down. Third and eight, Tony Gator. Nice piece of running here. It was Miami 21 to three when Syracuse finally put together a drive. Malcolm Thomas carrying it the last four plays, 44 yards he covered, but then Miami turns right around and runs it back 95 yards. Tremaine Mack putting Miami ahead 28-10. We're getting set for the second half. We'll be back in just a moment. Miami will have the football to start the second half. They won the opening toss and deferred. So Tremaine Mack awaits another opportunity. His return for a touchdown, the first kickoff return for Miami since Mark Rush ran one back 92 yards against Mississippi State back in 1980. Mack waiting for some blocking to develop. Out to the 36. Moments ago, Michelle Tafoya had a visit with Paul Pasqualoni, the Syracuse coach. Coach, you finally score a touchdown just before half, and then Miami comes right back with a backbreaker. Yeah, the, uh, our special teams have been great all year, and today we have not played well uh, from a special team standpoint. We've got to settle down, come up with a defense we can play on third down and try to get the ball back and uh, just play this 30 minutes, and let's see what happens. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. How about the special teams in the first half for Miami? Well, think about it, Jim. They had a kickoff return for a touchdown. They recovered a punt fumble by Syracuse that led to points. And they also had the blocked field goal. All for Miami, and that really did hurt Syracuse. And Paul Pascaloni, he hit the nail right on the head. His special teams this year have been tremendous all year long. You come into this kind of game, you don't expect them to break down like that. Trent Jones... Gets the first carry of the second half for a quick six. Ryan Clement in the first half. 10 out of 19, 159 yards, and three touchdowns. Second and four for the Canes. Gerard Daphnis in as the second tight end. Jones. About a yard shy of the first. Third and one coming for Miami. Miami with more first downs in the first half. Total yards uh, also decisive edge. Well, the passing yards is what really the disparity is right in those areas right there. You expected Donovan McNabb to have a much better first half than he had where Ryan Clement performed in the first half, Donovan McNabb did not. Third down and one. Jones doesn't get it. Not really. 
So Jones carries the football all three downs, but they come up a yard shy. This is a great way to get Syracuse started in the second half. Antoine Pons, number 50, he steps up with the big hit right there, stopping the first down attempt. Emotionally, this has got to help Syracuse. Crossland, Maddox, fair catch 21. Jim, I always, I always felt that the opening drive of the second half was critical on both sides. Certainly, if Syracuse can do something with it right now, it can change the complexion of this game. What's the perfect gift for the whole family? The gift of Prime Star Satellite Television. Up to nine. CBS Sports coverage of college football is sponsored by Prime Star, Mini Dish Satellite Television, the U.S. Army. Be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. And by Pepsi AC Acid Controller. You can be heartburn free with Pepsi AC. So the Syracuse defense with a mini statement on the first possession of the second half. Now let's see if the offense can get cranking. Malcolm Thomas for only a yard. Thomas with three games over 100 this season. 168 against Minnesota, but... That game ended up uh, with a loss, 35-33. Whenever Syracuse has tried to run flow plays directly at the defense, the Miami defense has snuffed them out. Whenever they've run counter plays like draws, those kind of plays have been the plays that are successful against the Miami defense. That was a flow play, an unsuccessful play. Second and nine, and McNabb picked off. It starts with the interception. Starks all the way in for a touchdown. Miami came with the pass rush. Donovan McNabb gets hit just as he's trying to release the ball. Dwayne Starks comes in there and picks that ball off and returns it for the touchdown, but it was the pressure of the Miami defense by Chad Pegues, number 94. He's the guy that got in there for the pressure. Starks' third interception of the season, 35-yard return. Interesting to see how those defensive linemen turned around and became blockers in a hurry. Oh, Gave them a clear path. Dwayne Starks, he'll be talking about this one all during the vacation periods come the Christmas holidays. He intercepts it, makes a move, and acts like a running back, gets it into the end zone. Chad Pegues, number 94, and Denny Fortney, 99. They run a little twist on inside and Pegues comes around. He's the one that hits McNabb just as he's trying to release the ball. The ball goes off target. Dwayne Stark steps in there, makes the play for the touchdown. Another huge shift of momentum against Syracuse created by the Miami defense. The third Syracuse turnover. And the lead has increased to 35 to 10 with 12 minutes to go third quarter. Syracuse with an eight-game win streak. Tim Turner snuffed out at the 17. Again, should there be a three-way tie for the Big East crown, the Big East team to advance to the alliance configuration, meaning the Sugar, Fiesta, or Orange, would be the team with the best standing when you combine the two polls, the AP and the coaches poll. And you still have to figure it would be Virginia Tech with a 10-1 and one record. And having beaten Miami. Having beaten Miami in the Orange Bowl, 21-7. It would be an injustice to Virginia Tech if they weren't the highest-ranked team. Because although they lost to Syracuse, 
They beat Miami head to head. And although Miami's been extremely impressive this afternoon, Virginia Tech whipped them when they went against each other. We'll know for sure, though, next weekend on Sunday, the bowl picture will be crystallized right here on CBS Sports. The Bowl Alliance Selection Show, 5.30 Eastern Time, right here on CBS. And how about second-half performances against Syracuse by Miami when you take into account the last three games? As we watch Rob Conrad pick up about six, maybe seven. Well, right now, Paul Pascaloni has the toughest coaching job of the season on his hands. He built his team up, along with his coaches, all week long for this championship game. Then you get into the game, and everything goes wrong. You start to get blown out. Well, this is where you've got to really try to rally your players, which is what he's trying to do. He needs to keep their confidence, his own confidence, and that's what he's trying to work on. This is the toughest as it ever gets right now. Third and one. on the pitch with the first down and more across the 40. It's away from Mack and brought down from behind by Marcus Wimberly. Roland Williams with a good clearing block. 30 yards on the carry. I mentioned that the option play would begin to take a better toll against Miami in the second half when teams are tired. Donovan McNabb lays the ball outside beautifully to Malcolm Thomas, and then the rest is Thomas. He breaks tackles. Three Miami players, two Miami players missed him. The third one finally got him down. Thomas moving in on his fourth 100-yard game of the season. Football at the Hurricane 44. Syracuse has just got to keep chugging away, keep competing, keep playing hard. That's what you do when you fall behind by 35 to 10. Still early stages, third quarter. Play action, and they absolutely swarm in on McNabb. It's Fortney. And McNabb's a little shaken up. Well, inside, we saw Chad Pegues earlier make the sack. Now it's Denny Fortney's turn, and the interesting thing is coming into the game, the two inside players for Miami defense, they're the ones that have been criticized throughout most of the season. The Miami people have said, hey, where are the Warren Saps of the world? We don't have the tackles that we used to have. But today, Chad Pekees, number 94, and Denny Fortney, number 99, they have stepped it up a notch. That's an 11-yard loss, second and 21. They counter with Thomas, gets about nine back. Jim, that's an example of a, of a type of counter play. It's not a flow play. It allows the Miami defense to rush up the field. You slip the ball underneath, and there's some cracks in the defense to move against. Thomas goes over 100 yards. Butch Davis trying to bring his team to an eight and three regular season record. McNabb has been under pressure. A lot of it, and coming into the game, the Syracuse offensive line had only given up nine sacks prior to today. They've done a magnificent job protecting this quarterback all season long. Third and 11. That's a lateral. That's a free football. That's a free football, and Thomas falls on it at the 44. They had Kenny Holmes realized it was a live ball. No question. The Miami players, Kenny Holmes particularly, were alert to see that this was a lateral, and they went after the ball. Luckily for Malcolm Thomas, he recovered in time to realize it was a lateral and got on it. Right here, he hesitates. Finally, he reacts. Yeah, you saw Kenny Holmes coming <laughs> at him. That was another loss of 11. Harvey Pennypacker, the center, injured on that. He's lined up right there. Almost anticipated the snap. He is quick. Starks, who made the pickoff, ran it back for a touchdown a moment ago. Now on the run back. Now to the 25. 
Back at the Carrier Dome, where Syracuse trails by 25, and Syracuse has suffered another loss. Their wide receiver, Quentin Spotwood, out with a bruised kidney. He was speared in the kidney in the first half. He's one of their best deep threat receivers, and that will hurt Syracuse, guys. No question, and Jim Turner's also uh, not uh, really walking around like he's 100%, a little gimpy. Edrin James on the pitch, first down Miami. And maybe a yard. Rod Gatson coming up to make the play. Well, you know, as Michelle pointed out, when you lose a guy like Spotwood, you lose Jimmy Turner. You're, you're talking about no wonder McNabb is having a rough day. I mean, you got to have your guys that you have the timing and the confidence in to have the kind of day you need. It's a stunned uh, Syracuse team that has won not only eight in a row, but by an average over 30 points a game. During that win streak, the closest anyone has played him was Temple last week, 36 to 15. Clement dumps it to Green, who battles for a first down at the 37. Next Saturday, December the 7th, Army Navy, 55th anniversary, Pearl Harbor. Army and Navy, a classic on CBS. What a scene. Uh, you're going to have you're going to have two wishbone teams going after each other and both it's interesting the academies have all had tremendous success this year. All three run a form of the option play and it negates a size disadvantage. Now, although the cadets on both sides have and the midshipmen have some size but generally not as big as a lot of college football teams that option game helps them. Clement long ball to green who climbs in the air and makes the catch at the 22. He had Abrams and Darius draped all over him. Yatiel Green has a chance to be one of the best receivers Miami has ever had. He's six foot two. He's going against Kevin Abrams who's about five nine and uh, Donovan Darius the safety comes over to help but this is just a great effort by the receiver going up and getting the ball at its highest point. One of the coaching techniques you always teach receivers is go up and get that ball out of the air. Yatiel Green did it as well there as you can do it. James for three yards. Green is over 100 yards in receiving today. Six catches, 129 yards. And one touchdown. It's the fourth time in his career he's been over 100 yards. The other three times he went over 100 in receiving yards, they lost. And you can't minimize his size advantage. He's a big receiver. That's a six foot two guy working against a guy five nine. And as good as Kevin Abrams is, there is a disadvantage size wise. He's ready to come back in. Second down and eight. 5:25 to go. Third quarter. And James, Nick Williams blocking out in front. And Abram drives him down at the 16. There is a flag in the pile. Yeah, we've got some tempers flaring there. We had, a, I, I think, a holding call going on and then some extracurricular activities. Guys kind of losing noise right now. Nate Hemsley, the outside linebacker for Syracuse, the one of the leading tacklers on the team. Personal foul, just the offense. 15 yards, and the spot of the foul. The team second down. See if right. Ooh. We had a punch. You know, normally that's ejection. I'm, su I'm surprised that that uh, was an ejection right there. Anytime you punch a player like that, normally it's automatic disqualification. Well, they saw it because they, they, they threw the flag. They, they, but ha they had to see it. Right here is where the punch is going to occur. Wow. Uh, no I disqualification. No, I'm surprised at that. Daphnis was the hurricane on 
on top of Hemsley. Second and 19. One-on-one -on -one coverage to Magic Benton. And intercepted right at the goal line. They say inside the one. Picked up by Ron Gadsden. Well, Ryan Clement has thrown an awful lot of good passes today. This happened not to be one of them. He needed to lay the ball inside. Instead, he laid it outside. And Rod Gadsden, he was able to run underneath it rather than Magic Benton. There was some miscommunication there between Ryan Clement and Magic Benton. Gadsden would have liked uh, for them to have said, hey, wait a minute, you're on the other side of the pylon. Let's bring it out to the 20. Instead, it's just inches from the goal line. And Syracuse takes over. Gadsden, who picked up the fumble in the first half, ran it back 59 yards now with an interception. The only, only the fifth interception of the season suffered by Clement. Look out for the safety here. Looking for room. And they get it with to Bucky Jones. James Burgess clogged the middle. Came out of his shoe to make that hit. Yeah, you can't play with one shoe on, except unless you're a kicker. You can play with it without a shoe if you're a kicker, but those linebackers, they can't play without shoes. Second and six. Syracuse from its own five. Option time. McNabb keeps first down. Ridden down by Starks. Near the 20. There we saw the athleticism of Donovan McNabb. He came down the line of scrimmage, faked, faked the pitch. The defensive end for Miami came up field, and as a result, he was able to tuck it underneath and make some positive yardage. That is a quick athlete with the ball. The option, again, earlier in this second half was effective for him. I think you'll see Syracuse come back with it a little more often. That, along with the draw play, has been the best running plays in this half for Syracuse. 14 yards for McNabb. Inside of four minutes to go in the third quarter. Option to Bucky Jones. First down in the third. After opening with losses to North Carolina and Minnesota, Syracuse has won eight straight, going over 30 points in every game. Actually, hitting the 30-point mark against West Virginia, but at least 30. In the last nine games, they had 33 in the loss to Minnesota. Then they run into this Miami defense that's playing very, very well. Jones for no gain. Once, once again, that was the inside tackle, number 94, Chad Pekis, who made that play. He's stepping up big today. McNabb, three out of ten. Two have been caught by the other side. Still in negative figures with rushing. Wide open. Daryl Daniel for the Syracuse touchdown. Tremaine Mack, number three. He's the player that bit and gave up the big play. Donovan McNabb finally gets on track and throws a strike. We've seen him do it all the time prior to today. He's had a rough day today, but that's the mark of a competitor, someone that comes back like that. It was a rope to Daryl Daniel, sophomore from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Just his fifth catch of the season. He was injured early in the year. Now Nate Trout. And 
and it's 35 to 17 with two and a half minutes to go third quarter watch the safety Tremaine Mack he's supposed to be in deep coverage and the receiver Daryl Daniel just ran down the field and Mack throws right there came off the hash mark he's the, the player that gave up this big play this completes a 99-yard drive in five plays. Well, and psychologically, it gives Syracuse a big lift because they know full well that they've prepared for this game for an entire week. This is a championship game. They're not going to die easy, nor should they. So Quentin Spotwood out with an injury. Jim Turner not 100%. Deion Maddox with an ankle sprain, so that gave Daryl Daniels some playing time. Jim, I mentioned earlier in the telecast, that's what happens in championship games. Guys go down right and left. Your best laid plans blow up in your face, but some other guy steps in there. In this case, Daryl Daniel, he steps in and makes a play for you. McNabb's longest completion of the season. Season premiere of college basketball on CBS. Next Saturday, the Kansas Jayhawks take on the UCLA Bruins and Clemson. So impressive in that early season win against Kentucky. We'll be playing against Virginia. That's all next Saturday after Army Navy on CBS. Well, Tremaine Mack answered the Orange's last touchdown with a 95-yard return. the goal line only to the 23 this time Jim I'm not so sure I'd kick off to that guy every time he touches the ball he is so exciting I might try to squib that ball to break up the timing of the return or pooch kick it to one of the deep people that aren't all the way back but I'm not sure I'd keep kicking it to number three he's pretty good he just tripped over his own feet but <laughs> I don't they care have to go down with the first hit you know <laughs> he really doesn't he's pretty good Paul Pasqualoni said we just hope we can get the dome shaking and for the first time today it is Clement was intended for Jones. We saw Syracuse's 8-2 season, Miami 7-3, with four opening wins, including shutouts in their first two league games. Then uh, the lost to Florida State in the Orange Bowl. Emotionally drained for East Carolina, which uh, really put a whipping on them. The win at West Virginia late, the loss to Virginia Tech the win over BC and the win at West Virginia may have told more about the character of Miami more than any other game this year second and ten Jones with the catch Clement is fortunate that ball was not intercepted and returned for a touchdown Dana Cottrell got a hand on it Antonio Anderson applying pressure on the quarterback. Well, we haven't heard Antonio Anderson, number 97's name, very often today. But here, the big cat really puts the pressure on Ryan Clement. Again, Ryan Clement threw that ball away right through the hands of number 56. Delane Morgan could have had that interception. 3rd down and 13. They're trying to get it, as you said, Jim, to Yateel Green, Donovan Darius, who was beaten for a touchdown, missed a tackle earlier on a touchdown reception, came across the field here and made the interception. 
outstanding play. Lays out his body and well, makes that reception. That tough catch. What? It's an interception, but it's it's almost like giving up a 40-yard punt. In, in that sense, field position-wise, you're right. But still, it does something to the crowd. Play action. McNabb with Holmes giving chase. McNabb plants the feet, and he's picked off. Picked off by Wimberley. Marcus Wimberley returns to the Syracuse 43. And we've got an update in New York. Back to Pat O'Brien. Donovan McNabb has suffered his third interception today. Donovan McNabb will grow as a quarterback. He's only, you know, he's a young player, he's a sophomore, but he threw that ball into coverage. He should have never let it go, but the pressure of Kenny Holmes and that Miami front is what's got to him. Trent Jones for a yard. Nearing the end of the third quarter. Marcus Wimberley's first interception of the season. Senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Nobody ever dies easy in these championship games. It's so hard to salt one of these games away. Both these teams have mentally prepared for a 60-minute battle. That's what you're going to get. Second down and eight. Clement, and Green doesn't hold on. 22 seconds to go in the third quarter. Kevin Abrams, Nate Hemsley. Helping to break that up. Norm Gerber, the defensive coordinator at Syracuse, said Kevin Abrams is the best defensive back that he's had here in the time that he's been at Syracuse. First team All-America last year. There's Norm Gerber right there watching this game. Third and eight for the Canes. Jones dropped for a loss by Pond. You want to see middle linebackers play the way they're supposed to. Antoine Pons, number 50, he will run through. He leads the Syracuse team in tackles for losses. Adds another one to his mark right there. They did not get the snap off in time. The quarter has ended. Miami really trying to get its punt team on the field quickly to not give Syracuse a chance to set up for the block. But that's the end of the third quarter with the score of Miami 35, Syracuse 17. We'll return to the Carrier Dome after this message and a word from your local station. It starts with a full quarter pound of beef with fresh toppings, our chef sauce on a bakery soft roll, McDonald's Arch Deluxe. If it were any more grown up, we'd need to check your ID. Oh, thank you. It's McDonald's with a grown up taste. Sierra's strength and exceptional power, life's daily obstacles are easily handled. But with Sierra's third door, you will have one less hurdle to overcome. Sierra by GMC. Putting you comfortably in command. Now is no time to discover your ordinary flashlight isn't working. Auto Snake Light. Plug it in or run it on batteries. Be prepared. The Auto Snake Light. Very clever, Black & Decker. In the courtroom or on the killing fields, the nation's best defense is a pair of criminal prosecutors. We have evidence. Jay. Premiere CBS Friday, January 3rd. CBS. Welcome home. 
We know this is probably the last thing you want to think about right now. So don't. Think about this. Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $319 a month. Or Jeep Cherokee Sport. Now is out for the game. He has re-aggravated a right knee injury, and he is on crutches and on the sidelines. Also, wide receiver Jim Turner, as we mentioned, re-injured his right hand. His return also unlikely in this football game. Jim? All right, Michelle Tafoya, fair catch by Dion Maddox, Terry Donahue, Jim Nance, as we start the fourth quarter. And jo George Myers, very consistent player for that front all year long. Little uh, check of the data bank here, Terry. The last time Syracuse defeated Miami was back in 79, and that was the season they were constructing the Carrier Dome. And uh, the interesting thing about that, where was the game played? Game was played at Rich Stadium, and Miami was quarterback by Jim Kelly, playing at his uh, future home. But it was on the losing end that day. McIntosh with a carry out to the 24. How about a little strategy here for Syracuse? Down 35-17 starting the fourth. Well, the clock is the enemy right now, and sooner or later when you're down by this kind of a score, you're going to have to put the game in Donovan McNabb's hands. He's not have a good, had a good day thus far, but your quarterback's got to be able to beat the clock. He's the guy that's got to be able to get you back into this game. You don't have time to just grind it out and continue to run. Second and three. They stay on the ground. McIntosh diving just short of a first. Juan Russell on the hit. Trust me when I tell you, Jim, Miami, they'd be happy if Syracuse would run every play. It yep. might take nine minutes to get right. down there, but that clock keeps ticking away. Sooner or later, the pressure is going to be felt by Paul Pascaloni and the offensive staff of Syracuse to put the ball in the air and let Mc McNabb win it. Third and one. for the first, to the 30. Syracuse was hoping to duplicate the feat of Virginia Tech last year when the Hokies started out 0-2 and then won out. Nine regular season games plus the Sugar Bowl victory over Texas. Well, and, and you know, they still got a shot here being, being down 35-17. What about last week when UCLA came from 17 behind with six and a half minutes left in the game and put it into overtime and won it? in the second overtime so you, you've still got plenty of time if you're Syracuse but you probably can't march the ball down the field on the ground rolling out with Lang giving chase incomplete thrown toward Daryl Daniel Starks on the coverage well McNabb has been under such pressure today one of the things the Syracuse coaches are trying to do here is move the pocket a little bit get him away from some of that pressure but the Miami speed is so good on defense that they can run you down whether you're inside in the pocket or outside subpar numbers for McNabb today four completions three interceptions and you have to wonder how much of it has it been the pressure of the Miami front James Burgess ran right out of his shoe again second and ten McIntosh Good tackle from behind by Kennard Lang. Well, you, you watch the speed of those defensive ends. Kenny Holmes, Kennard Lang, Kennard Lang, he ran him down. Just ran him down. He took the quarterback, then broke on the pitch and ran right down the line of scrimmage. You're talking about a guy that weighs 260 pounds is able to go down and make that play. That's how you can play good defense right there. 12 and a half minutes remaining. The junior from Orlando, Florida. McNabb felt like these were the two best ends he would face all season long. He, he talked about that, and, and they are. Lang, no, does not get the sack. Flags are down. Man is open. It's Williams at the 50. What a block put on Tremaine Mack as Williams rumbles to the 34. Terrell Daniel absolutely pancakes Tremaine Mack. Well, there are flags down. Back at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you, Mac, uh, uh, really groggy after that 
that block. Well, Daryl Daniels, he, he has gotten the attention of the Syracuse coaching staff. He scores a touchdown, then he just really punishes Jermaine Mack. The defense, penalty declined, okay. Watch the pressure once again by the Miami front, but Donovan McNabb escapes it clearly. A face mask penalty on Kennard Lang, but McNabb uses his legs, finds an open receiver, and here comes a big hit by Daryl Daniel. You, you, we don't see it right there, but he just, right there you find, see the finishing touches. Tremaine Mack, number three, gets decked. Oh. So Mack comes out, and Jack Hallman replaces him. First down from the 35 of Miami. Flags down. McIntosh for six. Another flag. This one was a quick one. Offside against Miami. He'll take it. First and five. So Tremaine Mack comes to, and he returns for Holman. You don't, you don't knock him out very easily. That guy is as rough and tough as anybody on that Miami team. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. Advances the ball inside of the 30. Syracuse in the second half with 179 yards. 12 minutes remaining. First and five. McIntosh, open room, down to the 13. Marcus Wimberly chopped him up inside the 15. When you get the ball deep to an eye back, you allow him to use his vision and cut back. McIntosh does exactly that. He cuts back away from the flow. He finds a crease in the defense. It's an excellent block by number 76, John Michaelitis. Michaelitis with a big block. Gain of about two, and Syracuse starting to find a cure for Miami-itis. Well, Syracuse is using all three of its tailbacks, Malcolm Thomas to Bucky Jones, Kyle McIntosh. They like to rotate backs, keep them fresh, keep them healthy, give them fresh legs in the fourth quarter so they can keep pounding away on that defense. But it's a problem when you're down by this score to take that philosophy too deep into the fourth quarter. you got to be careful. 10.55 remaining. Ball at the 12. Second down and eight. Staying on the ground, McIntosh loses two, maybe three. Lang and Burgess. James Burgess has had a great day for the Miami Hurricanes. He knows how to fill on the run and find the ball. Here he does an excellent job just sniffing out the ball carrier, worked his way through blockers and defenders and just got on it for the, for the loss. Third down, third down, and 10. This is the best game that James Burgess has played for Miami all season long. Big play for the Orange right here. No shotgun from under center. On third and 10, McNabb, good time, stays in the pocket. Now fires, pass caught, what a catch! Kevin Johnson, touchdown! Jim, I don't like the decision by McNabb. He just throws it through a, a crowd of defenders, but it's a great play by Kevin Johnson to make the reception, and sometimes players make those kind of plays. But it's, it's great to see Donovan McNabb fight back here, get his team back into this game with his touchdown pass. To move within 11. Nate Trout converts. 35-24. 9.55 remaining. It is not over at the Carrier Dome. 
13 unanswered points by Syracuse. What will she say? I love it. You shouldn't have. It's just what I wanted. Or will she say nothing at all? The diamond solitaire necklace. This Christmas goes straight for the heart. I thought you might be hungry. Happy holidays. Thanks, Dave. Happy holidays to you, too. If you're working hard this holiday, you deserve a big, hearty meal. Like Wendy's Smoky Bacon Cheeseburger Combo. Thanks, Dave. Three strips of hickory smoked bacon, smoked cheddar on a quarter pound of fresh beef with sautéed onions, made right when you order it. Plus, Biggie fries and a drink. Come in for a Wendy's Smoky Bacon Cheeseburger Combo today. Happy holidays, Dave. What a nice way to say happy holidays. They say the 50s were the golden age of television. But today, we can actually use our TVs to surf the internet. So we can go places we always dreamed of going. Find out about almost anything. Hear things we've never heard before. Amazing. Web TV from Philips Magnavox. The power of the internet now on your own television. CBS Sports coverage of college football is sponsored by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. De Beers, a diamond is forever. And by Philips Magnavox, bringing the power of the internet to your own television. Hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving weekend. It all got started with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Barney and Spider-Man. But here, what a comeback by Syracuse, but still down 11. They kick it long. Tremaine Mack, halfway through the end zone, will down it. Think about this. This was 35 to 10 when Clement threw a pass down near the goal line and was picked off at the one. Miami was looking to go up 42 to 10. And since then, it's been all Syracuse, particularly when you factor in that Syracuse in the last three games never even scored in the second half against Miami. But when you give a quarterback time, and the Syracuse line certainly gave McNabb plenty of time on this, they usually find an open receiver, and that's what Donovan McNabb did. Kevin Johnson, a converted quarterback, who was beaten out by Donovan McNabb, so he moved over to wide receiver. His first touchdown of the season. Tony Gator skips out of bounds. First down at the 31. Miami coaches making it real clear to these players they can't let up on defense. Randy Shannon, the former Miami linebacker, and now an assistant coach. Delivering a wake-up call on the sideline. Well, I guarantee I, would, I wouldn't want to be in the middle of that huddle. First down, Keynes. Edger and James. No game. Cottrell. Dana Cottrell saddles him right at the line of scrimmage. You know, Dana, Dana Cottrell not only has played good defense as an outside linebacker. He's been a rush in in their five and six defensive back packages. He's done double duty. Miami's offense has done nothing in the second half. The only points by the Canes coming on an interception return and a timeout called by Miami. The dome is rocking with 9-13 remaining.
and ten. Clement from the pocket fires in the area of Montreal Fulcher. Incomplete. Ryan Clement had plenty of time. The Miami offensive line did a great job giving him time that that particular play. That pass was just a little off the mark. It got low on him. He just didn't hit it. He hit it earlier. All of this is part of the noise, part of the tension that builds in a football game. Third and ten. for Syracuse, mounting a late charge. Man, nothing like a new pair of Nike turf trainers. Yeah, you know, Steve Young works out in the air zoom fly. Oh, can that guy hustle? All right. Hey, you're Steve Young. Yes, What do you think? Nobody gets you closer to the game than Footlock. Where it all begins. When did you stop loving me? How have I been a The Nissan Altima ranked the best car in its class in initial college. Financing for the Nissan Altima is now available at these special rates. The CBS Star of College Football Today is sponsored by Nissan, who remind you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. Pat O'Brien and Craig James in our New York studios, and our star of the day is Bobby Bowden's favorite player today, Ward Dunn. And Ward Dunn, he came into Florida State, used to be Charlie Ward's roommate, learned how to handle pressure, and today he showed that when you're playing in a big game, and especially against Florida, you control the ground game, you have a chance. 185 yards, which is a career high for him. Great charisma and courage throughout the ball game. Warwick Dunn is our star of the day. I bet he and Charlie Ward had some pickup games in basketball, huh? Well, no doubt about that. You know, and the other thing about this, Ward Dunn, did, he was left out of a lot of national individual honors. Today, he got his honor. Today, he's the man. Back to the game. Yeah, great day by Warwick Dunn. Terrific kid. But here, Syracuse has the football at its own 44. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Quarterback draw, McNabb into Miami territory. Gain of about eight. The draw play, be it the quarterback draw or draw to a running back, that's the key running play right now in this situation because you're going to be throwing the ball some. You want to be able to counter your passing game with a running play, and that's the draw play. McNabb, who wanted to dedicate this game today to his dad, Samuel, just had a operation to remove a blood clot from his leg. Second down and three. Option time to Bucky Jones. Good piece of tackling. Again, James Burgess. Right. Consider, Jim, he came all the way from the middle of the defense and ran that play down from the outside. He's in the middle of the defense, and this guy sprints to the outside against a good back who's got speed to Bucky Jones and makes the play. 
Miami third can, and one. can flat run. They can flat run. Burgess, you are right. This is his best game of the year. Everywhere. 7.20 remaining, third and one. Syracuse is really in two down territory. They'll go for this if they don't make it. So they got two downs to pick up one yard. Conrad. Yeah, I think he moved the pile enough to get it. He sure did. The second effort of big number 44, that moved it. They're going to give him a good spot. He made it. I'm not sure they gave him uh, the full extension. They're going to have to measure for it. But you see number 44, Conrad, he's the powerful back. He's 240 pounds. He pushes the second effort. It just depends on where those side guys spot that ball. I've lived through that a thousand times in one. Doesn't have it. I thought he had uh, advanced it inside of the 46. Close to the 45, but they measure it back uh, right on the 46-yard line. Fourth and inches. Butch Davis, fine defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys and at the Miami Hurricane program back in the late 80s, now looking for his defense. This Come is, up with a big play. This is where your quarterback sneak the ball. You've got six inches at the most to make this. Why give the ball to a back who's six, seven yards deep in the backfield? I believe behind that big Syracuse line, they'll just quarterback sneak it, make the first down, and keep fighting. Harvey Pennypacker will snap it to McNabb. Fourth and inches. It'll depend on the spot. The Butch is going to help him mark it. <laughs> he needs to put a striped shirt on if he's going to do that. First down. Says, hey, wait a minute. His foot was out of bounds back here. Yeah, that, that, that's what Butch Davis is arguing. He's arguing that Conrad stepped out of bounds with his left foot. Not so. Good call by the official right there on the spot. 6.49 remaining. First down. Maddox. Fumble the football. Fumble the football picked up by Miami. Recovered by Starks. And that says it all. Deion Maddox drags across the formation. He's wide open. McNabb finds him. He catches the ball. Now he's trying to get the ball out of bounds. He's running to the sideline to get the ball out of bounds, and it gets stripped by Tony Coley, 47, along, and Dwayne Starks on the recovery. Boy, right, Paul Pascaloni knows sometimes it just doesn't go your way. takes over at its own 32 with six and a half remaining. Trent Jones runs into Gadsden after a three-yard gain. If the Syracuse defense can just come back with a great series of downs here so they don't have to use, start using their timeouts. Try to save your timeouts. For later in this game, when you get inside of three minutes, that's when you start burning them. He's Again, how does this game affect the bowl picture? A Miami win with Vault Virginia Tech into the Alliance equation. Probably a spot for the Hokies in the Orange Bowl. Miami with a win, looking at a CarQuest Bowl bid or a Gator Bowl berth against North Carolina. For Syracuse, a win to the Orange and a loss maybe back to the Liberty Bowl against Houston which won the Conference USA. Jones breaking it. Gadsden giving chase. Jones inside the 10 and down at the 5. 60 yards. And Trent Jones isn't a very big guy. 5'7", 185 pounds, but he can make you miss, and that's exactly what he does here. The Syracuse defense over-pursues, 
He lets him do it. He cuts behind him with his vision. Then he's off down the sideline. Rod Gadsden saved the touchdown. But the football rests at the six-yard line with five and a half minutes remaining. Miami in no hurry. Jones. No gain. Emsley may have been hurt on that tackle. Senior playing his final game. Leading tackler for the Orangemen. He had talked yesterday about how they were too fired up for the season opener against North Carolina, and it backfired, and it may have been the same problem here in the first half today. Although Paul Pascaloni, his staff, and, and players all talked about not trying to repeat that same scenario, about trying to be looser for this game. Second and goal at the seven. I'd use my timeouts. I'd start using my timeouts if I was here to do so. 4.15 and clock running. See, at the end of the game, you don't need to, you need time for your, your offense. They don't need to have timeouts. The offense can operate without timeouts. You need time. That's what you need. What a season. What a coaching effort by Butch Davis. He's going to call timeout. Now, that surprises me. They, had, they must have had the wrong formation in there. Ryan Clement, though, is going to let the clock run all the way down to the 25-second mark before he calls it. Boy, that's a smart call by your quarterback. Burns an extra six or seven seconds. Doesn't call the timeout immediately. Third and goal coming up. We'll be right back. It's back. The Goodyear Buy 3, Get 1 Free Sale. Right now, buy three selected Goodyear tires at regular price. And the fourth tire is free. So call 1-800-GOODYEAR today and get on the line with your local retailer. Oh ho ho diddly ho ho Got your pizza movie, guys. What? I got your pizza movie. What's a pizza movie? You buy a pizza for your stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut, you get a free rental at Blockbuster. Pizza movie, get it? Free. How'd you do that? I'm Santa. I can do anything. Now at Pizza Hut, buy a large pizzeria stuffed crust pizza for $9.99 and get a certificate for one free rental of Blockbuster Video. This is getting easy. The new IBM Aptiva at Radio Shack with 3D games, 3D internet, and home director. It's no ordinary computer. No ordinary computer can make your home look lived in. Just when it looked like Syracuse was driving to move within a touchdown, to move perhaps within four points, the fumble recovered by Starks. A 60-yard run later by Trent Jones. Sets up Miami now. Third and goal. Third and goal from the six. Syracuse is going to blitz. Jones, no gain. They'll bring out their place kicker who has missed chippy field goals the last two weeks from about this same distance. A 22-yarder and a 26-yarder, and also from that right hash mark. The right hash mark has not been good for Crossland, and I'm a little bit surprised Butch Davis didn't run and put the ball in the middle because that gives your kicker such a better advantage. The angles are so much better. He has missed four of his last five field goal tries. The freshman from Dallas, who had opened the year, connecting on 10 of his first 11. Good use of timeouts by Syracuse in this case. They immediately, as soon as the play was down, they, they used a timeout. Keep that time, that precious time, from moving off that clock. Terry, this will be about a 25-yard field goal from the right hash mark. Yeah, it's not, as you mentioned, Jim, it's not distance, it's angles. And the closer you get down there, it doesn't make much sense geometrically, I guess. I mean, it makes a lot of sense geometrically when you think about it, but the closer you get there, the tougher the angle becomes for the kicker to make it. Tonight on CBS begins with Dolly Parton, Treasures. 
Followed by early edition and Walker, Texas Ranger. America's night of television on CBS tonight. So Crossland from 25 yards to put Miami up by 14. This time good. 38-24 Miami with 325 remaining. Nissan Altima. Ranked the best car in its class in initial count. Financing for the Nissan Altima is now available at these special rates. And a little dragon looked up to the moon with fire burning in his eyes. And he Why said, does he have fire in his eyes? Because he's a dragon. How come he's a dragon? Well, because... When you use your Visa card this holiday season, we'll make a donation to Reading is Fundamental. Together, we'll bring kids a million stories. Have I answered everybody's question? When do we get snacks? Visa, get everywhere you want to be. Next Saturday, 12 noon Eastern time, Army, Navy. Army's only loss of the year was to Syracuse right here at the Carrier Dome two weeks ago. What a season by the cadets. That's next Saturday, and that leads into our season premiere, Kansas, UCLA, to most of the nation. Some will see Clemson and Coach Rick Barnes invade Virginia. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time, right here on CBS. We'll Kickoff dance for Miami with a 14-point lead, three and a half minutes to go. McIntosh awaits the kick. Squibs it. McIntosh, well, finally scoops it up, down to the 20. Awfully good strategy by Miami there. They didn't kick the ball deep to give Syracuse timing on their return. They kicked it on the ground. It breaks the rhythm. If you get a good bounce, which they did, it breaks the rhythm of that return. Jeff Popovich all pumped up, as he should be. So Miami trying to grab a piece of the Big East title for the fifth time in six years. Barring any last minute heroics here by McNabb, Miami will come back and join Virginia Tech and Syracuse. Well, and I think it's safe to say that everybody in the Big East measures their own success by Miami's yardstick. They're the team that you have to beat every year, and certainly Paul Pasqualoni, he knows it better than most. It's unfortunate that he's had such a great year. But when this game's over, the questions are going to be, how come you can't beat Miami? I've lived that. Yep. I've lived that, that life where you, you have to deal with your crosstown rival or your, your biggest rivalry, in this case, Miami-Syracuse. Nine yards for McNabb. You've been saying all week there's just certain teams that psychologically can't get over the fact, hey, we can't beat these guys. And you cited the Michigan-Ohio State psyche. And the UCLA-USC through the years, you'd seen that as an eyewitness. No question. For years, it was hard at UCLA to believe you were going to beat SC. But once we did, now it's hard for SC to believe they can beat UCLA. Same thing true. Once Syracuse beats them and gets over that hump, it'll be easier the next time and the next time. Second and one, Maddox out of bounds at the 41. 229 remaining. Syracuse with two timeouts. 19-yard pass play. Miami not applying much pressure on McNabb so far on this series. Now throws over the hands of Daniel. 
Miami generally rushes with just four men. Once in a while brings some heat and some pressure, but they're more of a four-man rush. They're going to rotate some defensive linemen in there, get some fresh rushers, because Donovan McNabb's doing a good job with this two-minute offensive drill, and he's capable of moving around that pocket. That wears those defensive linemen out. Holmes will come out. Two twenty-two remaining. Second and ten. Going long. And Little almost grabbed it for the INT. Deion Maddox on the other side of the field was wide open. Donovan McNabb just didn't see him. He was focused on the left side of the field. On the right side, Deion Maddox had beaten his man, was open for the touchdown. Deion Maddox is going to run down the field, and when the scrambling starts, he's, he's actually outside. He's outside. He's going to run right between the defenders, and he is open in the end zone. And Earl Little, who laid out for that interception attempt, still down. Little had a pick in the first half today. You always worry when you're playing on AstroTurf, guys come down hard on that turf, and, and you don't want to speculate, but oftentimes your shoulders and things like that give way. We'll return to the game in just a moment. A two-year run, Frank Beamer, his coaches and players have had. I mean, a lot of people in the western part of the United States really haven't heard of a lot about Virginia Tech. We've had a chance, luckily, to see them play. They are a good football team, both sides of the ball and special teams as well. Third and 10, McNabb. Maddox drops it at the 22. Fourth and ten coming with 2.08 remaining. Well, you certainly can't blame that one on Donovan McNabb. He scrambled up into the pocket, stepped forward just like you coach him, and he found an open receiver. Deion Maddox hit him right where he needed to, but the ball just wasn't caught. Sometimes it goes like that. Last chance for the orange. Eight-man drop, only a three-man rush by by Miami. The right side move for Syracuse. And now it's going to be fourth and 15. Good ball foul. False start. On the offense, remains fourth down. With Earl Little out, Carlos Jones, number 12, has come in for Miami. Crowd roaring because the official noticed that one second had elapsed on the no play. So one more second retrieved. Fourth and 15 for the Orange. run for it. Miami collapsing in on him. He has the first down at the 27. Interesting strategy by Miami. They only had a two-man rush. They dropped nine people in the pass defense. McNabb couldn't find anybody, but he found a running lane to scramble for the first. First down from the 27. With time, it's complete. I can just look at you right now, Terry, and as an old coach, I can see what you're thinking. Just get it in the end zone, and this game's not over. No, by, by a long stretch. you still got two timeouts if you're Syracuse. You can onside kick. Even if you don't get it, Miami's going to have to make a first down, or you're going to get the ball back. But you got to get that doggone thing into the end zone. Butch Davis is thinking the same thing. Yeah. Trust me, he is stressing over there because he knows 
that this game is not over. Two touchdowns is not enough in this situation. Second down. Now they put pressure on him, and McNabb goes down at the 35. Seven-yard loss. Well, the sack man, Kennard Lang, he's the guy. He's the guy that's had the big season for Miami. A lot of people talked about Kenny Holmes at the start of the season, but 96, Kennard Lang, he gets the sack. He leads that team. His 11th sack of the year, and a timeout called by Syracuse, leaving the Orange with one. Back to New York for another update. Pat, take it away. Hi, Jim. Thank you. Pat O'Brien and Craig James still in New York City. Let's get you up to date on what happened in college football today. The big game, Florida, Florida State. Florida State wins, wins at 24-21. Florida State. McNabb dancing around, and uh, that pass incomplete. You know, if Nebraska was to get upset by Texas next week in the Big 12 championship game, Texas would get the automatic bid out of the Big 12. And you'll wonder what the Sugar would do for its matchup against Florida State. Would the Sugar Bowl consider a Florida State-Florida rematch since today was a three-point game? Well, I would certainly think that would be a consideration because you're, you know that Florida's not going to drop that far in the polls. They're going to be right. fourth, fifth at the most. You'd have the number one team against the number five team. But the excitement of a rematch, boy, that would be hard on Florida State. They wouldn't be happy about that. But well, they had to do it, what, two years ago. Uh, they had a rematch after a tie in the regular season. They met again in the Sugar. Fourth down, McNabb. Last chance, pass. Black falls. It's interference against Miami, which will give Syracuse another first down. Jack Hallman, number 44, he comes over the back of the top of the receiver early. It's a good call by yep. the official. I mean, there's no question he got there early. No doubt about that. Ball spotted at the 20, 119 remaining. The, pr the problem that Syracuse has, even if they score now, they've got to get the onside kick. Miami can run the clock out. Syracuse only has one timeout left. Miami can run the clock out if they don't get the onside kick. But, hey, I've seen that happen many a times. Happened to me. McNabb breaks away from the pressure. Now will run. Burgess gets him at the 10-yard line. Out of bounds. Stops the clock. 108. Good job by Donovan McNabb getting the ball out of bounds. That's a smart play. You got to get that clock stopped one way or the other. He got it outside, which he needed to do. Jim, one of the reasons it's hard for him to find any receivers is because everybody's dropping in coverage. You have at least seven guys back there playing pass defense. Sometimes you have eight, and a couple plays ago you had nine. There's just no lanes to throw the ball in. Normally, the most you're going to have back there is seven. So first and goal to go, 68 seconds remaining. Busted play, but McNabb's able to get four yards out of it. It was a busted play. Either the running back or the quarterback went the wrong To get way. back into this game with less than a minute remaining. The ball's at the five-yard line. They're out of timeouts. This is how it happens. You score quick, you onside kick, get the onside kick, and you got a time for two or three plays, maybe more. It happened to me against Michigan back in, in, the, in the 80s. They beat us with, with a minute to go in the game that very same way. McNabb, end zone, touchdown. Daryl Daniel with his second touchdown of the day. Well, Daryl Daniel has got to impress the Syracuse coaches with his performance today. And you, you, you have to be pleased for Donovan McNabb getting this touchdown pass. He's not, had a, he's not had a career day, but he continues to compete, continues to play hard. And, and how much of it has been his fault? The protection hasn't been all that he wished it could be today either. The Miami defense has got to get some credit. Trout to make it 38-31. There you have it. 
54 seconds to go. And the game's outcome will now rest on the onside kick. Army leads the nation in rushing. And Navy is fifth. And they'll battle. What a, what a day. I've had the chance to call two Army-Navy games. I'll never forget it. I'm looking forward to that day, Jim. You, you've talked a lot about it, and you've said what an what a unbelievable, spectacular thing it is, and I'm looking forward to it. Kansas-UCLA or Clemson-Virginia to follow. That's next uh, weekend, our season premiere of college basketball. John Feinstein wrote a book called The Civil War that really captures the spirit of Army-Navy, and they'll meet again next week in Philadelphia. You'll see it here on CBS. Now, the onside kick. Well, Miami has their hands team on. They've got everybody on the squad that handles the ball the best. You practice this throughout the week. You're always ready for this. They're going to have nine guys up front, and they just need to handle the ball, and the victory is theirs. Syracuse, on the other hand, they need a great kick. The key is the kick. Reale kicks it. Ball bounces. Flag is down. Catch was made by Chris Jones, Miami tight end. Miami football. Now, There's a flag down, but it's going to be against Syracuse. And and now Miami can just the procedure on the two men, one side of the kicker, on the kickoff. Penalties refused. First down. And now Miami can just take a knee. Syracuse has no timeouts left. All they need to do is exchange the ball, and the victory is Butch Davis, his staff, and Miami's. I've seen more suspenseful onside kicks in my life. <laughs> Chris Jones just smothered it at the 44. And Miami on its way to an 8-3 and three year. Heading to the Carquest or Gator Bowl, it would appear. And Syracuse, unlikely to go back to the Gator because North Carolina is there, and those two already tangled in the season opener. Plus, Syracuse went to the Gator last year. Possible car quest. Uh, very likely, Liberty Bowl to take on the Houston Cougars, who really resurrected their program this year under an outstanding job by Kim Help. And you got to give Butch Davis credit. This was a big win for his program. He's excited about it as well he should be. Yeah. On the flip side of that, my heart goes out to Paul Pasqualoni. I know how he's feeling right now. And... Uh, he, he has worked so hard to get his team in this position. He said this would be a game where we would be able to measure just how far we've come. Well, they come up a seven-point touchdown short. Miami wins at 38 to 31. So for Terry Donahue and Michelle Tafoya, Jim Nance saying so long from Syracuse. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.